We often share Positive Coaching Alliance materials. We'll share links, stories, that sort of thing. We have our Rocktober event that, that really is a PCA-focused event about respecting the game, honoring the game. I, I think just to jump in, people hear that a lot about PCA, about but honoring the game, respecting the game. What, what does that mean from your standpoint? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, that's our theme for this week, honoring the game. And um, we have an acronym when it comes to honoring the game. We're respecting the rules. We're respecting officials, opponents, teammates, and self. When I think about honoring the game, it's really about modeling and teaching the type of behavior you want to see. So let's say if things don't go your way. Maybe the official calls uh, makes a bad call against you or your team, or maybe you don't feel like you're getting the playing time that you should be uh, with the coach. Um, how do you respond to that? You know, what are you doing or what type of behavior are you showing in reaction to those things when things aren't going your way? How are you acting when no one's watching? You know, so those are the things that um, really represent us as honoring the game. You know, you bring up some great points. Last week was our whole college themed week. We yeah. talked to five different college coaches at five different levels. And regardless of the level of the play, they all talked about a lot of those same things, attitude, effort. What are you yeah. doing to handle adversity? What are you doing, like you said, when no one is watching? I know that you played sports at a high level as well, UCLA. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about these things. What was it like to try and live them? Oh, man. I mean, I had a fabulous experience when I was at UCLA. Met some of my best friends there. I had the pleasure of winning a national championship in 2010 with the Bruins. Um, but I feel like, you know, being a collegiate athlete, some of the, the attributes that I think are important is knowing how to, you know, really manage your time and prioritize, right? Um, making sure that you are having that effort, you know, 100% of the time when things get tough, you're not giving up, you know, the athletes that really play at the next level and um, participate in collegiate sports know the difference between, you know, um, loving the game and just playing the game. You know, you can just see the difference when you have a love for the game. It doesn't matter if thousands of people are watching you or if no one's watching you, you're still going to go out there and compete strong. Um, you're going to be a great teammate. You know, you're going to pick your teammates up when they fall down and you're going to surround yourself with like-minded individuals, people that also, you know, are college bound, also have goals, can also motivate you. So that's my advice to those high school student athletes out there that want to play at the next level. Make sure you're surrounding yourself with other people that are also, you know, interested in reaching the next level and that are going to push you and motivate you to be better. You know, I think a lot of people hear these things and they write it off as a cliche, you know, the yeah. classic, you are who you surround yourself with, but so many people have lived that experience and know that maybe it is something that you hear repeated a lot, but there's a reason for that is because it actually works. Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. Like you're a product of who you surround yourself with, and not just who you're surrounding yourself with the things that you're consuming. You know, what are you watching on TV? What are you listening to? Who are you following on social media? All those have an impact on the person that you're becoming. You talked about this week's theme for PCA being honoring the game. What, what are some of the other things that PCA is sharing this week that people can keep an eye out for during the week? Oh, yeah. So um, we are sharing resources every week with our Life as a Team Sport uh, campaign. Um, we have, we'll, we'll be releasing an article about how to honor the game and respect for the rules, officials, opponents, teammates, and self. Um, we are doing Facebook Live series. Um, we'll be connecting with you again on Wednesday. So yep. I want them to tune into that as well. Um, and just sharing all types of resources to help um, athletes and coaches um, continue to grow at home. So we've opened our online um, Triple Impact Competitor course, an online course, 60 minutes for middle school, high school age athletes to go through. And then we've also opened our um, course for officials. So we opened that up this week for um, officials to take our online course as well. You, you mentioned that, that, uh, tagline or that theme life is a team sport and yeah. i think never more has that been appropriate than right. today when everyone is really kind of battling to stay in a routine there's so much adversity going on how have you seen that kind of succeed as far as something that everyone's really been embracing over the last couple of weeks knowing that while they can't play a physical sport often right. they do have to use some of their athletic tendencies to try and get through trying times 
Yeah, absolutely. I feel like no one anticipated this, right? This kind of happened so quickly and escalated so quickly. And um, we weren't really prepared to not have sports, right? Sports has been on a hiatus right now. And um, when we talk about life being a team sport, um, right now we are all on the same team, right? And when things get tough, we have to pull together. We have to work together. So we wanted to make sure that we are supporting um, the youth sports industry right now with more resources and tools um, to help them in this in these trying times. And um, like you said, it's hard to develop a routine when uh, your routine is taken away from you. So that's one of the things that we're helping with, making sure that we can still have a routine, we could still connect virtually, you know. Um, and even though we not, might not be together physically, we can still, you know, build each other up, practice our, our unique skills, focus on those things that we can control um, because we don't really know when sports will be back and we don't really know what sports will even look like when it comes back. So right now we're just trying to focus on those things that we can control and that's supporting each other. Talking about all the content that we're sharing, a lot of the content that, that PCA is sharing, what are, what are some things that you feel like maybe in this time have really resonated with people? Has it been a specific message, a certain thing that has hit home with the high school and college age athlete? Um, I feel like right now, because we are in front of screens often, you know, so we're going to virtual trainings. Uh, social media has been a huge topic as well, you know, because now athletes are in front of social media. How do we build our brand? How do we get recruited? You know, how do we, you know, make sure that we're showing ourselves in a positive light, um, um, through our online platform and footprint too. So I think that's something that's been very, very popular lately. Um, and then just how to use your time in a productive way at home. You know, how do we still use our time in a productive way? How do we still uh, connect? How do we still grow with our family and um, practice at home and do those types of things? And, and, and you lead me to the next topic. You're talking about social media best practices. And I think this probably falls into two buckets for athletes. One, people that are interested in it and they want to use it to kind of build build their brand or build notoriety or right. w whether they're at the high school, the college level. And, and maybe it's as simple as getting recruited to college or maybe it's a bigger goal. They're in college and they want to be a bigger thing uh, in yeah. their community or as a pro athlete, whatever it might be. And then you have others that like social media and maybe don't know the ramifications of what they post is right. really there for an eternity. What are, what, what are some good practices just across the board for athletes as they're sharing things on social media? Yeah, I mean, I think number one is basically to remember that social media, I, I believe, should be used as your servant and not your master. You know, so I think that social media is a huge blessing because it allows us to connect with people all across the world, but it also can be a curse too if we use it in the wrong way um so making sure that we're using it um as a servant to build your brand um show yourself in a positive light when you're um, posting things liking things sharing things you know you're saying that i support this i believe in this you know um this is representing this is um something that's a representative of me so make sure that you're keeping that in mind when you're posting things. Um, I think, how do we build positive brands? Share stories. People love sharing stories and hearing stories. That builds that emotional connection. So if you can share stories, maybe about like your biggest sports moment or why you're even involved in sports in the first place, or um, even a funny story of maybe a mistake that you've made in the past out there on the playing field and how you bounce back. You know, we love to see things like that, um, sharing, who you are out there on the playing field or in the pool, but also, um, you know, with your family and friends in a positive light. I think that's really, really um, something that will share your personality with others. So yes, keep it appropriate, but also don't be afraid to share your personality. Don't be afraid to be authentic through social media. I think there should be boundaries, but I think that um, it is a great tool if, if you keep it positive and you connect with other people that um, are motivating you, making you feel better about yourself, you know, following those people that are gonna keep you in a positive mood, keep you happy, and also you're being that person for others. So we talk about um, in our social media, we have a social media guidelines um, that coaches can adapt with their teams. Um, we also have a live workshop that we do, honoring the game with social media. Um, that helps with those best practices. But I think, you know, making sure it's authentic, 
not being afraid to share stories about yourself and like um, things that you do, not just out there on the playing field, but also in life as well, um, that keeps you in a positive light. Talking with Marty Reed here from the Positive Coaching Alliance. You hit on a lot of key things there. I really like the idea of, of uh, you know, letting social media work for you. I think we can all get caught in being being glued to it and just right. the constant scrolling and feeling like we have to devote so much time and energy to it. And the other thing that was interesting is one of your previous points about kind of who you know who you surround yourself with is who you are. There's a bit of that in social media too. You kind of touched on it, and and I know I've talked to athletes in the past too where they'll retweet something or like something and think, well, I didn't say it. Yep. And, and to your point, well, you have endorsed it one way or another, and it's important okay. for folks to understand that. But, but also, and you've seen it too, especially with higher level athletes, the simple things is who you follow on social media. People will dig in a follower list and say, hey, well, you're following these 10 people, you must support X. Now everyone has their right to their own opinion to do what they like, but you need to right. know the ramifications of that. Right. Absolutely. And also, you know, um, people will have private accounts and think it's all good to post certain things or laugh at certain things. But, you know, posts are permanent. People can easily screenshot your posts and share it. And let's say down the road, you want to be endorsed or like signed by Nike and or some other big corporation, and they can dig up things from the past. And we all know coaches recruit from social media, um, employers in, uh, recruit from social media. So we have to keep those things in mind when we're posting and who we're representing and um, the type of light that we want to put ourselves out there in. Like you're representing your family, you're representing your school, you're representing your sport. So make sure you're um, keeping that in mind and, and, and staying positive. Just last weekend, WNBA draft, this weekend, NFL draft. It's not a matter of if, but when. Right. A social media post will surface about something one of these draftees said mm -hmm. two years ago, five years ago. We, we've seen it a million times. The photo surface of something they thought was private. There really isn't any private accounts. If you, if you put something somewhere on the Internet, it is eligible to be taken and used for or against you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. And I don't want to scare people off. of No, no. And that's not what we're trying to do here. We want to make sure that they just understand, you know, the, the parameters and have those boundaries to make sure that, you know, something doesn't come back in the future to haunt you that you made a mistake in the past by posting something that you didn't agree with or that you don't agree with today. Because then when you do understand all of it, you see the athletes that use it so well yeah. And, it, and it works so positively for them. They really have a connection with their fans, their brands. So you're exactly right. This isn't a scare thing. It's, it's just know it, understand it. And then, you know, it's like any powerful tool. Understand right. how it works, and then it can really do some special things for you. We're talking with Marty from the Positive Coaching Alliance. I've uh, got one question that came in here from Casey, and you touched on it a bit. Should coaches talk to their teams about social media? Should that be a different person's responsibility, a parent, a teacher? Who should be the ones addressing teams? Um, I honestly think that all of the above can address teams about it. Um, and definitely coaches can have conversations with their teams about social media. So at the end of the day, you know, it's a part of the culture of the team, right? And when you're talking about the culture of your team and what and the way that you do things on your team, social media can definitely, you know, come in that conversation. How do we want to represent ourselves as a team right now? We want to make sure we're uh, uh, having pride for each other. We're not embarrassing each other on social media. We're not sharing something about your teammate that they didn't want to be shared, you know? So we, I think, social media definitely comes into play because it is something that is a part of the culture now. I mean, when I was playing sports um, and being recruited, um, this wasn't something that I really had to pay attention to because it wasn't this big yet. And over the past woof, seven years, it's been <laughs> completely different. So I think um, coaches definitely need to take some time to talk to their uh, players about it. I think having a social media agreement or guideline um, you know, something that they can all sign and be on the same page about, I think would be great. And parents definitely should be monitoring it as well. Talking with Marty Reed here from Positive Coaching Alliance. If you have any questions to drop into the comments here as we work our way through. Jenny asks, have you heard of college coaches requiring players to remove themselves from social media during the season? Is this a 
a fair request? Do you agree with it? I know we've seen people like LeBron James will do a like a yeah. zero dark 30 for the playoffs where they shut down everything. What are yeah. your thoughts, Marty? I understand that. I understand that. So, um, like I said, when I was back, when I was playing and competing, it wasn't as big of a deal, but we weren't allowed to like read the tabloids and the news articles about us, you know, because yeah. even if it was a positive one, it's like, we don't need to get too big and too small, you know, it's like, uh, our coach called it noise, outside noise. And when you are locked in and focused as a team to perform well, that outside noise can be very distracting. So I understand taking that social media pause and break because it can be distracting to what the current goal is, and that's competing at the best of your ability as a team. So I do understand having those social media pauses when you know, you're in the thick of season and when the priority right now is playing at your best level and playing and coming together as a team. A uh, question here from Mag comes in. How do you feel about interacting with rival teams' players on social media? Maybe a little trash talk, try and get the rivalries. Maggie! <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, I think that it should be absolutely appropriate. In the words of Positive Coaching Alliance, we respect our opponents. A worthy opponent makes us better. So I think if you're going to interact with opponent on social media, it should be um, – fun, respectful, you know, if they beat you in a game, congratulating them, letting them know we'll be ready next time or something like that. So just keeping it fun and respectful, I think is absolutely okay. But making sure we're respecting our opponents because they do make us better. Keeping that in mind, as, as we talk about this whole student athlete experience and, and if folks have more social media questions, feel free to jump in with them. But uh, we, we've been talking a lot about out of the pool stuff. There is no water polo to play right now. There's no practice to go to. There's no team to be around. So a lot of our conversations are settling around, well, the mental aspect of the sport or what else can I be working on? With that in mind, outside of the pool where we're talking about, you know, whether it's in the classroom, elsewhere, what are, what are some things student athletes can do to, to really make sure that they're good examples, that they're good leaders? Even if you're not the, the quote unquote captain of the team, you can still lead in your own way. Absolutely. Um, I think everyone can play a leadership role on a team. You don't have to be the captain. You don't have to be the most charismatic, the loudest player, um, the most talented either. I think it has to do with being able to make those around you better. And um, what we talk about a positive coaching alliance is becoming a triple impact competitor. That's elevating yourself, elevating your teammates, and elevating the game as a whole. Um, I think leadership or um, signs of a great leader is someone who has excellent work ethic. You know, even though pools are closed, they'll still be, you know, working out. They'll still be staying on top of their game physically. They'll still be um, working on their mental game in this sports hiatus, right? Um, great leaders have uh, positive attitudes and they're great teammates. They lift each other up. Um, I see leaders on teams that know how to make other players laugh or know how to make other players bounce back after a mistake quickly. So that's another type of leadership. We call it filling the emotional tank, showing appreciation to your teammates, reaching out to your teammates right now and letting them know that you're thinking about them and that you care about them, having their back, you know. Um, and last but not least, we talk about honoring the game, having that integrity when no one's watching, um, supporting your um, – or uh, making sure that you're having that positive behavior um, and holding yourself to a high standard even when others don't. So um, I think a great way to do this right now is to take our online course, the Triple Impact Competitor online course with Positive Coaching Alliance. And I'll send out a link if you want me to um, so they can know how to access that. But that's a perfect way to spend some time at home right now and getting yourself better and preparing yourself to when it does become that moment where you're back out there in the pool with your teammates, um, you're ready to make them better in your own leadership way. Yeah, a lot of easy to digest materials on the Positive Coaching Alliance website, on the social media accounts. We, we share a lot of content as well. Um, double goal coach awards I know come around annually and a lot of water polo coaches are typically annually honored. Uh, there's a lot of numbers usually involved by triple impact double goal I think because you're always recognizing more than one thing in a person. It's never just about this one thing. It's about many things. Yes, absolutely. And I know that um, we talk about sports being um, really a gateway to learn life lessons and um, 
you know, competing out there in the pool and on the playing field prepares us to compete in life. So we're always looking at the bigger picture. We're always trying to make each other better. And we're always trying to support our teammates and what we say, fill the emotional tank. And right now, a lot of people need their tanks filled. No, you're exactly right. We've, we've had a lot of folks on the last couple of weeks and people are floundering a bit without a routine. And as you've talked about, one way that you can really make yourself feel better and make a friend or a teammate feel better is just to reach out and check on someone else because we're all missing that human interaction of being around our teammates. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We're talking with Marty Reed here from Positive Coaching Line. Just a couple of more minutes. Appreciate you taking some time to talk with us here. Uh, Casey asks, how does Positive Coaching Alliance work with USA Water Polo? And we know the PCA works with a lot of national governing bodies. One, one uh, way that the two organizations work together, of course, we mentioned our October uh, PCA 1200 Classic, which we hold in Arizona most years. And it's really a tournament that focuses on, on those things you talked about, roots, honoring the game, where we're getting all of those messages out to athletes as they're starting their competitive journey. You know, I'm curious in your time with PCA, what, what benefit has there been to sharing these messages with a younger athlete so that they carry it through their career as opposed to trying to convince someone about it when they're 25 or 30 right. and, they're, and they're, they're already older? Get them when they're young. Absolutely. <laughs> Get them when they're young while they're still molding and able to learn and open-minded. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, no, but that's real talk. Like, you know, when we start to do things a certain way for a long period of time, it's harder to change just as humans. So I think we definitely want to take advantage of youth as they're young to really get these messages ingrained into the way that they're doing things. So we don't have to go back and kind of fix things in the future, right? So um, I think it's important to share these messages with um, kids at the youth level so they'll, you know, start to make positive contributions throughout their lives. So it starts early, it starts young, and it's going to keep going. It's going to keep growing and it's going to become contagious. Like that's the type of athlete that we want to see. And that's the type of teammates that we want to see. And they're going to become great coaches. They're going to become great parents. They're going to be great leaders in life beyond sports. Excellent stuff. And, and Casey brings up a good point. If you, if you learn early, then you don't have to break bad habits later because yep. you've already learned some of these great things. Marty, I really appreciate you taking some time here as we kind of wrap up, you know, for, for those that maybe are only a little bit familiar with Positive Coaching Alliance and if, of course, we encourage you to go back and watch this. We'll leave it up on our story for a full 24 hours. But what are what are some general thoughts you'd leave people with if, if maybe they weren't that familiar with all the great things that PCA does? What are some things you really want people to know? I really want them to know that we are providing resources, not just for coaches and athletes, but also for parents, um, administrators um, that help improve the culture within your organizations. You can go to positivecoach.org to learn more about PCA, but definitely tap into those resources. We actually have a resource center, um, our dev zone. And you can type in any type of hot topic that might come up. Maybe it'd be coaching my own kid or dealing with playing time or how to bounce back after a mistake. And all of our podcasts, resources, articles on that topic will pop up for you to learn more and share. Um, so definitely connect with us on social media and online. And um, yeah, we are happy to be partnered with USA Water Polo as well. And, and, and as you go through all that materials, you will notice a ridiculous amount of high profile athletes and coaches have lent their time to PCA, which, which I, I think for the person that stumbles upon it for the first time really validates, Hey, the best at what they do, coaching athletes, parents are involved in PCA. So it really lends extra credit to all the work that you guys do. Absolutely. It's not just, you know, Marty Reed's principal, you know, it's like, <laughs> we've got national advisory board members, Doc Rivers, you know, we had Herm Edwards on a uh, Facebook live last week. Um, and I've had the pleasure of meeting Adam Krikorian, AK. Um, so we have tons of people who have been doing this for years and are the best at it when it comes to coaching, sports psychology, resources, that we're continuing to develop our content from them. So I uh, appreciate you bringing that up and um, letting everyone know about that. And then we'll be talking on Wednesday, I think at 10 a.m. Pacific on the Positive Coaching Alliance Facebook page. Yes, so everyone tune in, check us out on Facebook. We'll be having another conversation. Excellent. Well, Marty, appreciate the time. Thanks so much for getting our week started off on a, uh, 
a positive note, pardon the pun, but I'll say it anyway. And uh, look, we're looking forward to talking on Wednesday. Thank you so much, Greg. It's been a pleasure.